We're at MEF 19 in Los Angeles, California, and I'm speaking with Sterling Perrin from Heavy Reading. Hey, Sterling. Hey, good to talk to you, Phil. It's been a busy show for both of us, probably more so you, but uh, <laughs> let's talk about, uh, well, a couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, SD-WAN, uh, you presented some research uh, here at the conference on SD-WAN. Um, you know, what was, uh, what was one of the kind of highlights or one of the big findings from the from the research that was put? Yeah, there? so we did this project, and it will be uh, it'll be published as a white paper, so it'll be available for for free uh, for anybody who wants to download it in December. Okay, uh, we did it in partnership with with MEF, mm -hmm. uh, and I presented some of the research here. One of the interesting things is we surveyed uh, there are 125 operators respondents globally. 52 of them were from MEF membership. Okay. And so there were interesting comparisons between globally how operators are viewing things versus uh, the MEF members. Oh. And one of the things that came through was about 40, so we asked the operators, uh, where are you in terms of rolling out SD-WAN services, managed SD-WAN, about uh, 45, 47% said they're implementing them now. Mm -hmm. So that shows yeah, SD-WAN is more than hype, it's being rolled out. It's traction, But the yeah. interesting thing was, um, about three quarters of the MEF membership have already rolled out SD-WAN. So the uh, membership, you know, MEF goes back to Ethernet, of course, and its heritage, but right. uh, these members are very engaged and, and clearly early adopters okay. in rolling out uh, SD-WAN generally. And so they're a good barometer for, you know, some of the data that you see where MEF members are, are different results from the, the group overall. You can see where, where the industry will go. My suspicion is as the general population gets more um, deeper involved, they'll, they'll start heading more in a MEF uh, direction on, on some of these topics we asked about. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it seems interesting too because because it, it, like you said, it's a leading indicator. It's yeah. not it's not a, a, a screaming majority of the group. But right. If they're early adopters and they're already implementing it. That means probably everyone else will follow suit. The carriers tend to do that, you know, over time. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, one good thing about MEF is their membership is very very large carriers. Yep. And the people they get are very, you know, deeply involved, high-level people within the organization. So, it's not like they kind of throw darts and say, "What are we going to look right. at?" It's it's top of mind thing. So that's yeah, you know, brings us back to why SD WAN is so big here at the event. Okay. Um, any other uh, 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 things that came out of yeah. the, the panel presentation? I know there was an associated panel with the with the uh, research presentation. Any any uh, items come out of that? Yeah, there were uh, a, a couple things. Um, I'll bring up two, uh, kind of in maybe reverse order of, of um, impact. Uh, the, the one that was connected with the, the survey was, uh, we asked about um, the importance of monitoring third-party underlay services for SD-WAN. So, okay. you know, SD-WAN, of course, is an overlay service. Right. Uh, a carrier will have their own network for a piece of the connectivity, but then at some point you go to somebody else's network. Right. Um, it was a very high proportion of the respondents said that monitoring of third-party underlay uh, is critical for their strategy going forward. Uh, okay. The underlay is not just some, you know, thing that's that's there and, and best effort. It's it's a critical piece. Yeah. For the, but for the MEF membership specifically, it was over 50% of them said monitoring of underlay of third party is critical to their SD-WAN strategy. And again, these are the early adopters. And it okay. was so over 51% critical, and then for important, it was another 40 something. It was like 96% said, this is a really big deal for us. Um, MEF is starting to get involved there, but there hasn't right. been, been much work done. And this um, is to monitor the underlay network of the uh, somebody of else somebody else's because otherwise yeah. right that the big knock on SD WAN always is going to be it's a best effort right and so how far can a business service really go if all it's doing is basic broadband you know connectivity right. it's that's the yeah, the weakest it's link really good in this region not right. so good in the other region right I mean whatever. this is why we see it's not you know at the beginning everybody thought MPLS is going to be replaced by SD WAN right. Then we quickly realized, no, that's not going to happen, and then MPLS may even still be growing. Mm -hmm. um, it's because SD-WAN right now is the best effort, and it's you know a black hole and mm. on the on the underlay side. So the underlay is a critical piece. Okay. Last um, last point. Yeah. So the last one was, um, which came up on the panel, is the critical the critical importance of the cloud um, contingency cloud providers yeah. in the future of of SD-WAN and for you know, all of these services going forward. Um, and the fact that that's a, a significant challenge for the MEF uh, group going forward, 
It's a group of, as I said, very strong network operators. Um, there has not been strong cloud participation historically. We don't see a lot of cloud participation here. And right. it really came up with this board level member uh, panel that it's, it's a very big deal for them going forward to get cloud providers involved um, in the event and in the standards because right now the cloud providers, you know, to, to be blunt, they just don't care about this kind of work. Right, right. Operators it, do, cloud doesn't, but if the cloud right. doesn't, it's going to limit. It, yeah, it, it, it limits the type and the, and the trajectory of what kind of services you can make available to enterprises and, mm -hmm. and what good is it to say, you know, here we have these uh, these assured services over here, and then we have these other services because they touch the cloud. They're they're a little bit different. <laughs> exactly. And so the thinking among the the MAF and, and the panel is that as these cloud services become more and more towards mission critical types of services, then the cloud customers will go to the cloud guys, and the cloud guys will come back to, to groups like the MAF and, and ask right. for some help. But uh, yeah, it, it, it does present uh, at least a fork in the road in terms yes. of uh, where, where, where this stuff sort of sorts itself out in the marketplace. Right. Um, and we can't, uh, uh, and all we can do is speculate at this point. It is, <laughs> right. It's certainly not here yet. It's, it was identified as a problem, I think, okay. and, and then we'll see where it goes. Okay, well hey, thanks for, uh, for the update and thanks for your, uh, for your work at the show. Appreciate it. All right, it. thanks Phil.